Thank you. Our next question comes from Barbara Crossett from the United Nations Association. I just want to carry on with the, the theme of public opinion a bit on a different sort of level, and that is uh, the question of raising um, public awareness, not just awareness, but that it goes into action, as you know, writing to your Congress, member of Congress, uh, you know, doing things publicly. And it strikes me that in many of the parts of America, certainly, and maybe in other industrial nations, not a whole lot of people see what you've seen. Not a whole lot of people have, for example, been in the rural areas of Ethiopia or places where it's so starkly evident what's happening. And I, I just wondered what suggestions you would have for, for, is it social media that needs to be involved? How can this be more dramatically presented to the public when you're fighting all these other images uh, on, uh, on the Internet and other places? Um, and also, it sounds strange, but um, taking opinion makers uh, from, for example, local newspaper editors to a place like where you've been or to some drought-ridden place in Africa, whether there's any way to start getting people to sort of feel and smell and sense exactly what's happening uh, and not make it a sort of theoretical issue. Well, Barbara, I mean, that's the, uh, again, back to the major question we've been talking about. Uh, first, uh, you and I know that uh, the, while you can't predict exactly uh, from the climate models what's going to happen, we know that the overall trend is going to be increased drought, increased flooding, increased number of fires. And we're seeing exactly that sort of thing in the United States today. Uh, with increased flooding that is uh, this last year, with the kind of fires that have swept raging through Arizona, eastern New Mexico, western New Mexico, and Texas, uh, the kind of uh, uh, dramatic climate impacts that we have seen in the United States already. Slowly but surely, people are going to connect the dots. They're going to understand that this is precisely the kind of, of significant change uh, that has been predicted and that we're slowly but surely seeing. Uh, happily, there are people uh, like those in the, the weather forecasters who have come together, you know, into a, a major group to try to discuss and to understand uh, the impacts and how they explain climate change and climate impacts when they're doing the evening news and talking about the weather, which is where most people in the United States get their information. That's going to be I think over a period of time, an extremely important uh, set of steps to take. We also have to do a better job of having the scientific community being able to explain what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it in uh, very clear terms that are understandable you know, to 300 million Americans. Third, we have to, I think, again, as I suggested before, undertake an aggressive program but to go after those who are among the deniers, who are putting out these mistruths, and uh, really call them for what they're doing and, uh, and make a battle out of it. They've had pretty much of a free ride so far, and uh, that time has got to stop. Uh, those are three ideas that I would think right up front. Let me ask my colleagues uh, here, Reed or Ted, you would, as, as uh, U.S. citizens, uh, additions that you would make to that list of suggestions. 